Well, good evening, everybody. Good Friday evening. David Paul here. We're in the KHOU 11 Weather Center. Uh, this is your complete uh, 8 p.m. tropical update that we're going to do every day through the rest of hurricane season here. So you can always get a complete live update here on Plus or whatever digital KHOU platform you're on at 8 p.m. during the week. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do it the w during the weekend as well. Uh, here's the setup. That X is what's left of the remnant circulation. What there was, there never really was a complete circulation of our area of disturbed weather that we've been tracking for the past couple of days. It moved inland late this morning and that cut off any chance it had of actually developing. What I want to show you is and what I've drawn on here. You see the the squiggly lines, the streamlines. Th this is surface wind. These are the the surface wind uh, indicators right now and you can actually see how the winds came up and over and never never closed off a low. So this has just been and remains a tropical wave right now, just a wave. Those are the surface winds. But what you can also see on this satellite imagery is notice how the moisture comes in and then look which way it's being pushed this evening. Moisture comes in and then it's getting a shove to the southwest. Why is that? I want you to look at the cloud motion then I'm going to show you how, why this is moving this way. Look at the look at the clouds up over and see right here how they're some of this is pushing south then it pushes southwest. Well, that's because, and I'll, I'll do this live, at the upper levels of the atmosphere, we've got a completely different circulation. A dome of high pressure is building in from the west. So now, this is the flow at 250 millibars. This is up at 34,000 feet. And look at the flow up over and around and that is what is shoving the moisture and the storm itself off to the west and southwest. It's this high that was building in that stopped us from coming further north. It stopped it and now it's caught in the flow around that dome of high pressure which is centered right there. Again this is up there at 34,000 feet but that will shove everything with it and so what there is with the moisture is now riding the current to the west and southwest and that is going to actually keep us from having rain chances that are over the top tomorrow but we've still got tropical air in place and so we're still going to have a good chance for rain and thunder showers as we head into tomorrow afternoon just a closer view there's just not much going on here very little in the way of rainfall or convection what's left of the circulation is fizzling and being becoming elongated and that's the end of our area of disturbed weather this is the radar loop over the past hour one little scattered shower uh, just north of the King Ranch, a couple of showers near the Rio Grande. That's it. So they're not getting much rain out of that <clears throat> at all. Take a look at future track models still producing rain, but it's further south, heavier rain in South Texas as we head toward 3 a.m. Again, anytime you get a tropical uh, band of moisture coming in like this, you've got to watch it like a hawk because any thunder showers that do get going could produce very heavy rain. Uh, so that's 3 a.m. And notice we could see a few little showers here in Houston Galveston going into the evening and the overnight in the Houston area. Move this forward in time. Uh, this model just updated in the past hour and it is bringing uh, the chance for some locally heavy rain into San Antonio and the Hill Country. So they're aware of this. Weather offices up and down Texas are aware of this threat. They're watching it like a hawk. We wake up in the morning Saturday morning relatively quiet. But then as we go through the day, watch how rain chance continues in central Texas and we end up with a good chance for a swoosh of scattered showers and thunder showers on Saturday. It's all the moisture coming in from our little system that was unable to officially develop. Here's a closer look at our future track as far as rain goes. We go into 3.30 a.m. Saturday morning. Hopefully you're just sleeping like a baby. A couple of little showers, though, are possible even at 3.30 in the morning, we'll take you into sunrise and again, 6 a.m. could still have some scattered showers, especially north of the bay. We'll go through the day on Saturday, 9 a.m. Scatter showers, even in the mid morning, we could see some little downpours here and there. I said little, they could still be tropical downpours. Then the heat begins to build toward 90. We'll see more widespread showers beginning to get going by noon 30 and then in the afternoon tomorrow. A lot of folks are going to get wet with widespread scattered showers and thunder showers. I've got a 60% chance for you to get your yard a drink of water tomorrow. Still didn't update this. All right, August 13th. You were here two days ago. Now we're right here. 
but clearly we're on the uptrend statistically toward the statistical peak of hurricane season, which is September 10th. So it's no surprise that right now we're getting more activity showing up in the tropics. Again, Colorado State University forecasting 16 storms, 14 is normal, so forecasting a slightly above season by the time we get to the end of the season. The uh, NOAA outlook, again, both these are mid-season. They came out just a couple weeks ago. 13 to 18 storms, averages 14, so that would be a little bit above normal. Sea surface temperatures are a little bit above normal across the board, so there's plenty of warm water out there. And I don't think we looked at this yesterday, but there is still dust forecast to come off the west coast of Africa. That could you know, help to keep the storm count down the rest of the month. We'll wait and see how that plays out. This is through August the 22nd. Again, dust is usually at the mid levels. It is a sinking dry layer of air. It's exactly the opposite of what you need to get hurricanes going in moist rising air. That's one of the reasons we track it and it can have a big, a big influence on the number of storms in a season. So the only system going right now is Aaron. We've had five storms. If we get to 16, that would take us all the way to Pablo on the names list. Got a long way to go to get there, uh, but it certainly can happen. Now, big picture, you know, this is the disturbance that we watch for a couple of days in the Gulf now weakening here in South Texas. And then this is now strengthening a uh, hurricane Aaron. Aaron has gotten a lot better organized over the past 24 hours. Remember yesterday we had pressures that were just a little bit of below 1,000 millibars. Now they've dropped down to 982 millibars. As that number goes lower, as the pressures drop, it's an indication of an intensifying, a deepening low pressure center in this storm. And the storm itself moving west, at, west northwest at 17, still moving at a pretty good clip. Max winds are now 85 miles an hour. They've come up 10 miles an hour uh, since we went on the air at 5 o'clock this afternoon. So it's getting better organized. And just looking at this, there are a couple of things you can see. Uh, first of all, the storm is becoming very compact. An indication of, think of an ice skater pulling in their arms and spinning faster as they pull their arms in. That's exactly what's happening. It, that's a, uh, uh, it's a process called the conservation of angular momentum. So as the skater pulls their arms in, it spins faster. And then if you'll notice clouds going this way, so spinning clockwise, that is happening at the upper levels. That's at the exhaust level of the storm. And that is an indication that you've got good flow through the storm. You've got good evacuation at the top of the atmosphere. That's the exhaust. So there's nothing blocking the engine right now, nothing blocking the exhaust. Uh, we've got warm air coming in at the surface, rising and then exhausting out the top of the storm at all quadrants. So this is a this is what you want to see if you're going to see a strengthening hurricane. And it looks like, yeah, look at that, especially in the last frame. That's an eye just about to open up. Can't see the the ocean surface yet, but that is the eye of Hurricane Aaron just about to open up. That happens. When you get a strong cat one and getting in a cat two, that's usually when you start to see an eye form. And so we're at 85. So cat one winds range from 74 to 95 miles an hour. So once we get to 96 and above, it'll be a cat two. And at that point, I think we will see an eye form. And that is forecast to happen. There has been a tremendous change in the forecast intensity for this hurricane. Take a look. This is from the Hurricane Center. By the time we get to Saturday afternoon, we're at Cat 2, winds of 105. Then by the time we get to Sunday afternoon, Cat 4, winds at 130. So this is forecast to become not just a major, but a really powerful, powerful hurricane. Great news is, you know, it, these are the Lesser Antilles Islands. That is a hurricane watch here for the Northern Antilles, but it should stay far enough away to not impact it too greatly there. It misses Puerto Rico completely. No watches or warnings up for Puerto Rico. And then it misses the Bahamas. Hopefully it will also miss Bermuda. It misses the Outer Banks. But look at how strong this storm gets. Monday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, forecast to get to 145. Cat 4, that is a powerful and, and overall a very rare global event to see a Category 4 hurricane. But that's what we're going to get, I think, out of Aaron as it sits in that spot for a couple of days where you've got evacuation up top, plenty of warm water, nothing to slow it down or stop it from strengthening. That's a great outcome for a Cat 4 to miss all the major land masses, does not get into the, into the Caribbean or the Gulf. 
And then again, running the European and the American model simultaneously. You can see the two outcomes at the same time. They're close to each other, Euro, American, both off the Outer Banks and both missing Bermuda. That's great. Let's just keep this one out to sea, which is exactly what it does. Now, as we take this model run out to August 22nd, next Friday, a week away, a couple of things I want you to notice. First of all, no uh, activity forecast in the Carib or the Gulf. Take that with a grain of salt. This time of the year, things can change overnight. Also, you'll notice the American model, the yellow, forms another storm, moving toward the Lesser Antilles as we head into next Friday. So we have the yellow model, the American model, thinking it's gonna, we're gonna have another storm out here. The European model, you know, just as good, says, nope, no storm. So what do you do with that? This is just the nature of trying to forecast the tropics a week out. You, you can't do it. You just have to take it one day at a time. And so that's literally what we do here. It's the first thing we look at in the morning, last thing we look at at night. We do a handoff, and then Cheetah up in the morning is instantly on the tropics to see if anything has changed out there. And that's kind of what you have to do as well. It's why we urge you during hurricane season, especially when things are quiet, watch the weather once a day, at least once a day, so you know what's going on, so nobody gets caught off guard in case one of these pops up on our doorstep. And this is a great spot to get it. We'll continue to do this for the rest of the season on Plus and all our platforms at 8 p.m. Uh, Saturday's numbers then, enhanced chance for rain because of the tropical atmosphere in place. We're gonna go to 94, 60% chance for a scattered thunderstorm tomorrow, the extended forecast, 30% Sunday. Now take a look at this. Daily rain chance continues. It's just one of those summers. Sometimes we get summers where we're under the heat dome all summer and it's just awful heat all the time. This year, we've, we've been under the heat dome for only very short bursts, two or three days and it moved off. So we've got these scattered showers each afternoon, 30 to 40% chance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then look at Thursday and Friday. So it looks like a boundary, a trough in the upper levels and a frontal boundary is gonna come in and stall in Southeast Texas, Thursday and Friday. So in lieu of that, we're raising the rain chance to 70% for Thursday and Friday. Those may be a couple of very wet days. If you got plans or you know somebody who does, you got a birthday, you got to drive somewhere, you got a doctor appointment, whatever it is, uh, keep an eye on the forecast as Thursday, Friday next week could be wet. That is where we stand on this Friday evening. The weekend is here. Our next live broadcast on KHOU 11 News at 10 o'clock. We'll see you then.